Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson, and we are going to continue our studies, and we are wrapping up this year, reviewing for the final exam for grade seven. Here is our 2019 show, and we're going to start off with remembering you can always call dial a teacher if you need help with your homework. That's 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We also have our YouTube tutorial videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, write a comment, let us know how we're doing or, or what else we can do or what, what you would like to see. So uh, let us know. Check out our new release, um, PKMS Math Prep 19. I think you'll like it, it's a good show and the kids did an excellent job. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. Don't forget to watch our show on Tuesdays, Math Times from 4.30 to 5 p.m. Cablevision, Optimum Cablevision, Channel 15. Okay, here's our first question. Kaleidi needs one and one-fourth cup of sugar to make five batches of brownies. What is the number of cups of sugar she will need to make one batch of brownies? All right, so a multiple choice question here. So let's get a pen going here. And let's do a little proportional reasoning. So we got sugar, S for sugar, and we're gonna compare that to B for brownies. And uh, making proportions, as you remember, if you haven't seen my proportions video, check it out. So let's see, first thing we know is she, had, she uses one and one fourth cup of sugar. So I'm gonna put one and one fourth cup of sugar and that's going to make her five batches of brownies so I'll put a five over here so what's the number of cups of sugar so we better put a variable here like X that she will need to make one batch of brownies so I'll put a one underneath there and if you remember from before we have to cross multiply and solve for x so let's cross multiply our um, circle out cross products so five times x will equal to one times one and one fourth all right so five times x is five x one times one and one fourth is just one and one fourth and now all I have to do is divide that by 5. That way the 5s will cancel out, leaving me with x equal to, and divide this. So I can write divide like this by 5, because I'm going to get my calculator to deal with this. So bear with me one second. OK, got my calculator. So let me type in a 1 and one fourth and I know one fourth or one quarter is 1.25 and if you forgot how to change a fraction to a decimal check out my other video on doing that divided by five and I get 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 would be a quarter 25 cents. And I think we have a but button on this calculator. So there's a button for changing decimals to fractions. So if you press second FD, oh, a fraction button, press enter, and there's your one fourth. So our answer will be one fourth. So x equals one fourth, which is choice A. So I hope the brownies taste good. Here's our next question. What is the value of x that makes the equation below true? So we have x over 11 plus 2 equals 8. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that I use when it comes down to dealing with these fractions because here I have 
some unknown plus 2 equals 8. So I got a fraction that I have to deal with. But if I cover up that fraction and have some number plus 2 equals 8, I know that number has to be 6. So obviously choice uh, 2 is suspicious because uh, it's less than 6. So uh, that'd be a really an unusual improper fraction in order to use 2. But anyway, um, I'm looking for 6 out of what's here, under here, this fraction. So I really need to take a look at trying to figure out how do I make that fraction equal to 6. So let's get a pen and choose a color. Okay, is that blue? So I know it's going to be equal to 6 because if you minus 2 from both sides, you're dealing with 6. So this stuff equals 6. And over here, I have... What is that? X, X over 11 equals 6. So let's bring that down. Yep, pen again. X over 11 equals 6. Now I could use my calculator and guess and check to figure out uh, 18 divided by 11 is that 6, 66 divided by 11 is that 6, 126 divided by 11 is that 6. So I can guess and check with the calculator. However, uh, if you remember the last question a moment ago, I can make this a fraction and cross multiply. That's how we solve these by proportional relief, uh, reasoning. 1 times x will equal to 11 times 6. 1 times x is x, and 11 times x is 66. So my choice is going to be choice C, 66. And you can check that by saying 66, here's my check, check, check. 66, when x is equal to 66, 66 divided by 11 plus 2 should equal to 8. So we have to check that. 66 divided by 11 is 6, as we said earlier. 6 plus 2 is 8, and it does check out it's equal to 8. So both sides are checking out to be equal when x is equal to 66. So that's a good question. So I hope everything is going good for you so far. Check your understanding. Rewatch the video if you have questions. Write them down. Bring them in the class, and we'll be glad to answer them. Here's our last question for today. The graph below represents y, the cost of dollars, of x pounds of salad at a salad bar. What is the unit rate for the cost of a salad at the salad bar? When you remember, back in sixth grade, they called unit rate the cost of one item. So when you're buying one item or one pound in this case of, of salad, that would be what the cost of that one pound is what we're looking for. So I would go to one pound, and that's on the x-axis, and go up to the line, see what this dot is right here, and look over to here and find out what is that cost. And that cost would be cost in dollars, four dollars. So I would say four dollars and I'd be done. But I noticed they gave us a point here. In seventh grade we found out that the unit rate was called the constant of proportionality. I abbreviated COP for short, COP. And that was equal to the Y value over the X value. Because if you had a proportional relationship then, uh, and you should check out my uh, videos on proportional relationship, how to find the constants of proportionality. All we did was just take the y coordinate and put it over the x coordinate. So if we take our y coordinate, which was 2 in this case, and divide that by 0 0.5, which is the x coordinate, we'll get 4. So let's get our calculator just to check. Let's clear this stuff up. 2 divided by 0 0.5, we should get 4, and we do. So that's one way you can do it in case they may not have the value of 
one on the on your line and and you just can't directly see it so you still should get four so that's a good way to find your unit rate or constant of proportionality so i hope you enjoyed the video remember if you need help there's dial a teacher homework helpline 212-777-3380 monday to thursday from 4 p.m to 7 p.m don't forget to watch our youtube videos my channel name is Dan Robinson. Check out our latest video release, Math Prep, uh, PKMS, Math Prep 19. It's a good movie. And subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up on our videos, as well as make a comment or a suggestion on what we can do better to help you out or whatever video you'd like to see. Um, you can tweet me at erobmath1. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays, 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision, Channel 15. Well, good luck on your test. I know you're going to do well because you've been watching my study tutorial videos and paying attention in class. If you want to study with me and like a copy of some type of worksheet or handout on this topic, just write me at robinsonmath at aol.com. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll do well on your final exam. And I'll see you next time. This is Dr. Robinson. Have a good day. Bye.